Hey, welcome to Black Hole Woodworking. My name is Matt. My wife's been doing a lot of painting these days, so we have a lot of new art. It's really nice. The only problem is I don't have any frames. So that's what I'm building today. Frames for canvas prints. Let's do it. What I'm showing you here is the cross section of a 2x4 and all the parts I'm going to use out of it to get my frame. The two parts on the left that are a little bit bigger are the actual frame parts that you'll see. They'll wrap around the canvas and the parts on the right, that's going to be the backing and that'll be mostly hidden by the canvas itself. The first step for me is cross cutting the 2x4 to the right length. Usually what I do is add about two inches to whatever I'm going to end up as a final dimension. After that, it's over to the jointer to flatten out the bottom and also to make a square edge. Then I run it through the planer to make a parallel top and also a parallel edge. This way I actually don't have to use my table saw for this part, even though I would anyway because I would have to get rid of the saw marks. Here I ripped down the two pieces that I showed you at the beginning. The one on the left is going to be for the frame part and the one on the right is going to be the two backing pieces. After that it's back to the planer where I once again remove the saw marks. And then at the band saw I ripped this down to 17 millimeters each. This way it leaves me about two millimeters to again remove saw marks at the planer. It's now time to start cutting the miters. I'm using a miter sled for this and I do a method where I have a side one and a side two. And as long as I put a side one and two piece that I've cut together, I'm gonna have a perfect miter. One thing I also do when I'm mitering up things like this is I pre-glue them and let them dry. And then I re-glue them and glue them together with the pieces that they will match with. After the glue has dried on the joints that I've made, I run them through a spline jig. And all I'm doing here is cutting, I guess, through the corner where I can put a spline into to strengthen that corner. Because I don't think these miter joints on their own are gonna be very strong. On this frame, I'm putting two splines in. So I'm basically splitting the sections up in thirds. Of course, after I've cut the splines, I've actually gotta cut the spline material. And I do that at the bandsaw. I kind of mark out how much material I need, get the thickness right, and then cut myself little triangles that I'll glue into the frame. I realized pretty quick that when I put the splines in, I gotta get the tape off first because I end up pinching the tape into that spline, mostly because they stick out over the edge a little bit. These ones fit nice and snug, and I was pretty happy with that. I'm not usually a big fan of having to whip out a hammer and try and hammer those things in. I just feel like I might damage the frame. Here I am starting to put in the backing. I've cut them to uh, all the backings to like a 45 miter, uh, again using the one and two method, and glue it up and basically use whatever I can to make it stick. Well, when I put the frame together, I forgot to make sure the bottom piece here was clamped all the way down. So I gotta sand that flat. It won't matter in the final product, but it sure matters in what I gotta do now. Once the glue is dried on the splines, I take them over to the bandsaw and nip them off as close as I can without touching the frame. The finish I'm putting on this one is a charcoal stain that I make by crushing charcoal and using boiled linseed oil to get it to stick to the actual frame. And really it's just a process of dipping toilet paper, in my case, or a paper towel into the boiled linseed oil and then into the charcoal and on it goes. It creates quite a nice finish in, in my opinion. And then once you've rubbed that all on, you gotta rub off all the excess and that's when it becomes really smooth looking.
Because I planned my cuts out, this is about as much waste as I get other than sawdust. So I had made a few frames based on the measurements of one frame per size and I thought they would all fit within there. My original plan was to just make a simple bordered frame like this where I would friction fit the painting inside. Now that didn't end up working because each of these canvases are not the same exact dimension and they're out enough that they hang over the edge by like a millimeter or two. So it's like a 32nd to a 16th of an inch. Pretty small, but big enough that I can't get it in there. And I'd even gone so far as to get some of these stained and splined and I was super happy. I got all the stuff done. And then I went to try and stuff one of them in here and I even blew the corner open even with a spline. Yeah, I didn't actually let it dry all the way because I was just having too much fun mounting frames or paintings inside of them. But unexpectedly, I had to change up my design. This is a color test I did with boiled linseed oil and the ash and the mineral oil and ash. I actually like the boiled linseed oil and ash better because it's just a warmer look. What I'm doing here is pre-drilling the holes into the frame where I mount the canvas. I highly recommend not drilling into your countertop. I did not thankfully. But I wanted to show you that the screw I'm using and the drill bit I'm using are almost the same size. I actually want the screw to slip through the back side of the frame and bite into the canvas frame. Oh, disaster. I didn't pre-drill my hole on that knot and it broke the screw. Not so fun, but it was an easy fix. Just meant I had to pre-drill it and screw it back in. And yes, I picked a new hole. And this is the frame in its final form. I've mounted all the hardware, which was like one thing. And it's all kind of done. I got my splines in, the corners look great, and the painting fits. In fact, I don't have to worry so much about trying to tight fit these canvases into a frame. They now have some space. Hey, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and share it. Thank you.